la no freedom. Toils of the brave and the sweat of the alley boss. Toils of the brave which have brought freedom. It's a good evening, Ghana Editorial. Now, this is the post that was put up um, uh, on Facebook. Here it is, and uh, we'll read it, and then we'll, we'll go and deal with it uh, systematically, and we will touch also on the GJA press statement. So this is the screenshot of the uh, Facebook post. Now, here it is. It says, why is Paul Adam Autry, I believe that is me, sending the GJA press statement to media houses? I know his closeness with Jospon, but not with the GJA. And that's a big part. I know his closeness with Jospon, but not with the GJA. Uh, my first reaction to this is, what's, what's wrong with Opana? You don't know my closeness. I'm a member of the GJA. I am a bona fide member of it. Maybe not in Gustav. I'm a member of the GJA. And you are asking that you don't know my closeness with the GJA. What's the meaning of that? What kind of desperation is that? You are asking me, a member of the GJ, that you don't know my closeness with it. So I'm a member of Asante Kotoko. And then Asante Kotoko issue a press statement. And I'm canvassing for this press statement to be applied by media. And then you sit there and tell me that you don't know my closeness with Asante Kotoko. When I'm a member of it, this is contradiction in terms. Now, this is what happens when people are motivated in the wrong way to deal with matters that they should be dealing in the public interest with a very level head. This is what happens. You go and put there uh, this kind of post. And of course, people were, the insult started, yeah, there, blah, 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 all, all of that. But this is what the guy wrote. I know his closeness to Joshua. I'll be explaining that one in a minute. But not the GJ. Now, a contradiction in terms. I am a member of the GJ. You are asking about my closeness to the GJ. <laughs> I don't get it. A person is a member of the GJ. Haven't you noticed I'm a member of the GJ? You don't know. And then you are asking about my closeness to the GJ because you are desperate. What, what kind of sentence is this? And what, what import is this statement about? That you don't know my closeness with the GJ when I'm a member. Please, revise your notes, yeah? Because I am a member of the GJ and I canvassed for the position of what had been articulated in the GJ press statement. And tonight I'm going to talk about it. And we will look at the GJA press statement. And we will understand what is wrong with the GJA press statement. Those who are calling that the GJA press statement is wrong. And this evening I've heard civil society. I've heard, I've heard civil society tonight. Now let's deal with it. Let's, let's, let's look at the GJA press statement. Do a content analysis of it. We will come back to his closeness with Jospon and closeness with GJA and people who don't like the GJA statement. And we'll understand why. We have gone to India for research. We have gone to America for research. Tonight we have a lot. We have gone to the Ghana courts for research where people have done media trial and have lost the case in court. People have done media trial in this country and have lost the case in court. We all jumped on the bandwagon in the late 1990s and went on Eddie Annan, and he has stolen this, and he's corrupt, and he's that, and he's that, and that. And we had a media trial and called him corrupt. He won the case. Didn't the civil society see that Eddie Annan won the case? Why are we destroying such a great talent? This man has a great talent. Mr. Man, you have a talent, and you have conviction. Don't allow wrong motivation to take you to places where you need not go. And when you write things like that, you expose your cerebral weaknesses and limitations. Don't write things like that. That a, a person is a member of the Appentine Mensa family. Then you say you don't know his closeness to the family. You, do, you don't know that he's a member. And how can you even write that? When a person is a member, you say you don't know his closeness. And so he's distributing GJA statements. You don't understand his closeness. Let's have a look at the statement. We'll do this in 10 minutes and then we'll come and deal with all the matters. So the statement is this. People have not seen it. And they've heard about it. But here it is. We'll take it paragraph by paragraph and do a content analysis of it. And, we, and they should show us what is wrong with the statement. The Ghana Journalists Association has been following with keen interest developments on the media landscape relative to investigations into alleged high-profile cases. Now, the statement opens by the GJA indicating that they are relating this statement to current occurrences. Why is the, the, the civil society group 
pretending that the GJ is hiding behind something. What are they hiding? They are telling you that it is recent developments. Haven't you seen it? It's, it's been following with keen interest developments on the media landscape. So the, the GJ is saying that this statement directly relates to what is happening in the media landscape. They are not hiding anything. They are, they are telling you that it relates directly. In fact, they are talking about the matters that have been going on. That's what they are addressing. So paragraph one, there's nothing wrong with it. So, is there something wrong with it, please? Facebook, good evening, Ghana official. Let us know. It. Now, it says, we wholeheartedly applaud the courageous manner with which some of these cases are pursued in fulfillment of the media's constitutional obligation to hold to account people in positions of power and responsibility. A beautiful sentence like this. What's wrong with it? They are saying that we wholeheartedly applaud the courageous manner with which some of these cases are pursued in fulfillment of the media's constitutional obligations to hold to account people in positions of power and responsibility. Let's move on and let everyone see it. So we've done two paragraphs. Let's go on. It follows. At the same time, now here's the caution. At the same time, the Ghana Journalists Association urges extreme caution. What is wrong with a person being cautioned? We'll come and talk about that. When you are doing media trial, and we have been in this country, and people have gone to court against the very brand and have succeeded, and they are cautioning you that you have talent, you have conviction, but be cautious, and you don't, and, and what's wrong with the statement? Let's go on. At the same time, the JJ urges extreme caution and circumspection in order not to pronounce certain people guilty in the media, whereas any court of competent jurisdiction has not even tried them yet. Now, this statement speaks directly to the ethics of the profession. It speaks directly to it. And we have gone to India to find out what they think about the ethics. We'll show you. This statement here, civil society, this statement speaks directly to the ethics of the media profession, that we are cautioning you with circumspection in order not to pronounce certain people guilty, because that's really what is happening. And we have done that before. We have gone to court, and we have had egg on our faces. We have been defeated in court in this country. Didn't civil society know that? Recently, we are all in arms, hand in hand, trooping to Kwesi Nyantechi, the president of the Ghana Football Association. We are begging him for somebody. Are we not? Are we not begging him for somebody? Is he not, is, is, don't they have a case in court? Are we not begging Kwesi Nyantechi for somebody? And when the GJ puts this up, you say that it is a wrong statement, that it is intended to castigate and impede. I don't even know where they get that from. This statement is castigating and impeding. Please, let's go on. At the same time, the JJ urges extreme caution and circumspection in order not to pronounce certain people guilty in the media, whereas any court of competent jurisdiction has not even tried them. The stories must also be balanced. Balanced story speaks to the ethics of the profession. Well, why is anybody thinking this is pulled out from the moon? This is speaking to the ethics of the profession. The stories must be balanced, ensuring at all times that the perspectives of the parties at the center of such investigative reporting are frankly represented. We'll come to those details. It is important also that all facts are fully verified before they are thrown into the public domain. All facts fully verified before they are thrown into the public domain. Let's go on. With a statement on it. This is a statement. I'm sure some of our people who are quite busy have not seen it, but they've heard people saying or something about this. Such trial by the media, such trial by the media can inflict serious reputational injury. But that speaks to damages. When somebody sues you for damages, they are claiming damages against reputational injury. And so the court will measure the quantum of their reputation. And based on that, the court will slap you a fine if they find that the matters that you articulated publicly and tried them are unfounded. Is that not to the ethics? Why is the media law people? Is that not to the ethics of the profession? Such trial by the media can inflict serious reputational injury and cause devastating harm to their business. That could ultimately have adverse effects on the Ghanaian economy. I, what, is this new? Is this something that nobody has heard before? It can also ignite a backlash in the form of suits or legal wrangling from aggrieved persons. And this must be avoided if possible. We have been here. Ediana went to court. He won. He won it. He won the case. After we all sang and he's corrupt, he's collected Senate contract. Contracts have been inflated. We brought documents to the studio. He went to court. He was successful. And the media house was slapped with a fine. One broadcasting house, one print house. Have we, have civil society. Civil society. Didn't you see Ediana go to court and win? Didn't you see Hakman Osuajiman go to court and win? 
So when people are being cautious that uh, DJ is cautioning his members that, please, Opana, you have talent. There's no doubt about that. Opana has talent. Nobody is. Mr. Man, you have talent. You also have the drive, which is admirable. But you need to stay on the straight and narrow. And people need to be bold and say that. Don't be motivated by wrong energies against a particular individual and say this. Anyway, let's go on. There's a, there's a few things we'll say in the next five minutes. Let's go on. And we'll show you some videos as well. Don't worry about that. We want to make it interesting. So there'll be some videos. And I'm sure you'll enjoy it. We should also be mindful of using media to wage a smear campaign against individuals, especially local businesses and personalities who have made substantial contribution to the growth of the economy, especially at a time when government is calling on private sector to support its rebuilding of the economy to create more jobs. Smear campaign is when every time a report comes out, it is about a particular person. That's a smear campaign. We'll deal with that. We'll deal with it. We'll discuss what investigative journalism is. The one that William Nyaku and Raymond Nacha used to do. We'll discuss that. We'll show some examples and compare it to what's happening now. And draw the firm conclusion that this is trial in the media. And if we don't check it, we will go the same way Eddie Anand took us. And we had egg on our faces. It is also important for the media to recognize that successful businesses are a sine qua non to the growth of the media. Investigative journalism in general and anti-corruption crusade in particular are fraught with risk and threats. Much as we encourage journalists at the center of such crusades to be deterred by the challenges, not to be deterred by the challenges, we expect them to be strictly guided by ethical values and especially the GJA Code of Ethics. So far, nothing wrong. Let's move on. If anyone finds something wrong, send it to us on Facebook. We'll read it. Let's move on uh, to the, is this the final one? Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. That is why the GJ has always advised against the trial of people in the media, as it has serious implications for media freedom and responsible journalism, but to rather focus on the principles of fairness, balance, and accuracy in their reportage. Um, yes, so that's still the GJ statement. It's now uh, 32 minutes past 9 o'clock, so 20 is. Let's go back to the, let's go back to the statement again, the screenshot. Let's go back to the screenshot again and, and deal with it. Because, I mean, I don't understand why a, a person will put up that screenshot uh, with such, you know, fundamental misunder misunderstanding and misappreciation of the whole situation. I know his closeness to Jospon, but not to the GJA. Okay, so now I've established the point that I did send the statement wa to one person. I, I, I don't think that I was sending it to, to media houses. I sent it to one person. But I'm happy to send it to media houses because I'm canvassing for this position. What a DJ has written and has said, there's nothing wrong with that. Anyone should come and show me what is wrong with that. Let's do a content analysis. Let any communication professor take the, the content of the thing and show me where in the content analysis there's something wrong. Then the media commission was saying that the, the, on, on the surface, there's no problem with the matter, but they can see a sinister motive. The DJ disclosed in the opening paragraph that they are responding to things that are happening currently. They didn't say that they are responding to things that happened yesterday. They were not hiding that. Now, I want to tell you, Mr. Man, that this brand that you are carrying, it is a very important brand. And so don't debase it. You see, this is a brand that has been built by many people. It's a brand that has been built by the Komla Dumo, Samens has built some, Gabi Ajete has built some, Dorinando has built it, uh, Bolare has built it, our Deputy Minister of Information. It's a brand that has been built by people. So when you come and take the brand, don't debase it and put statements like this on your Facebook page. That are contradictory in terms. That's on Form 1, SSS person can look at it, but what is he writing about? How can you write of a person who is a member of an association that you don't know the, his closeness to the association? How can you write? of a member of an association that you don't know his closeness to the association of which he's a member. Now you want to investigate my closeness to the GJA of which I'm a member. This brand that you hold, it has been built by many people. It's a top quality brand in Ghana, in Africa. The brand, it's a top quality brand, multimedia, it's a top quality brand. So when you come and inherit it, don't come and debase it because you have talent. Yes, you do. And you have zeal, you do. But when you are motivated by wrong energies, that is what you will do. You will expose your cerebral limitations and cerebral weaknesses in this way. You know, when you want to be a, an investigative journalist, I'll talk about William Nyako and Ramonata in a bit. You have to engage with the literature. You have to engage with Plato and Aristotle and Homer's Iliad. 
so that you don't write things like this that somebody who is a member of the association you don't know his relationship with it that you are guessing his closeness even me cry me i've built the brand i was part of those who in my small world when we were small small boys we used to build the brand have a look at this have a look at this building the brand the brand that you have inherited it is a high quality brand this was voting day in election 2000 and this is how far we took the brand. We had a meeting in the office, and we decided that we'll get an interview of the president when he was voting. Since then, it has never happened. Inside the polling booth, we were there. This is the brand that you have inherited. So lift the flag high. Don't write things as if you, you have a problem with content analysis. Don't be writing things like that. This is the brand that you have inherited. This is the brand that you have inherited. Build it. Other, other people, many people, we have all in our small, small ways built. This is there. There you go. This is building the brand that you have inherited. This is us working hard to build the brand that you have inherited. So when you inherit the brand, don't come and debase it and write things that expose your cerebral weaknesses. A person is a member of the association, you say you don't understand it. And so you are writing these kind of things. Now let's go to the, yeah, we are building the brand. We thank God for that. But this is the brand that you have inherited. The brand, you have inherited it. And you have talent. We agree with that. And you have zeal. When you inherit a brand that people have built, don't come and debase it. Continue with the standards. Don't do this kind of thing. Somebody goes to a contract. He doesn't win it. Then he calls you and says, I didn't win. He won. All the four companies are for him. There, is that investigative journalism? You think that's investigative journalism? When William Nyaku used to do investigative journalism that we used to see? William Nyaku, those of you who may not know. William Nyaku is not a lawyer. He's Asla. That's him on the screen. He will travel to Sunny Abache's uh, Castle Rock Castle as a journalist with his recorder and go there and interview Major Guazo. That's a life and death investigation. Oh. As soon as he brings it, Reuters and everybody is interested in the story. That's the kind of investigative journalism that we were used to. Not two people go and bid for a contract. Somebody doesn't win it. Then he comes and says that, I didn't win. He won. All the four companies are for him. Go, take it on radio and go and read it. And then you go and read it. What is this? Is that, is that investigative journalism? And, and, and you are not worried and you are not taking the caution from the GJ that be careful because maybe when you are sued, you will lose the case. You don't understand that. I will show you that the BBC and the ITV, recently they have been sued and they have lost it. Raymond Acha is there. They have all done investigative journalism. They've all done it. But we know that you have talent. That's Raymond Acha, my friend. Why people, these people do investigative journalism? The Newsweek is calling for it. Newspapers in America are calling for it because you can see that they have applied intellectual capital in dealing with them. And journalism is not about catching people and hiding recorders. It's about taking the documents and exposing the intellectual capital. And I'll show you what that kind of journalism presents. And you can do it, Mr. Man, because you have talent. Open now, you have talent. So we understand that. But you can do it. You see, that's what, that's what happens. I'll come to a just one thing. But when you see quality journalism, it is intellectual journalism. It's not because you arrested somebody or you found him or you hit the camera somewhere. No. It is taking documents mm, and looking at the documents and then assessing it and adding such intellectual capital that when you speak about the analysis, everybody is wavering. Recently, we had an example. I'm going to show you the example now. Now, you can say that I am trying to brag that he trained under me or that I recruited him or that we trained him. Whatever you can say is fine. I'm happy about that, but I'm not bragging about it. But I'm compelled to show you the difference between taking documents when somebody has lost a contract and putting things out there that you can't defend. I'll come to something you have not been able to defend, and nobody's asking you about it. When the man came to your studio and told you that you have no evidence that he owes 140, up to today, you have not been able to produce the evidence that the man owes the state. You are not the state, and you have to understand that, Opana. You are the fourth estate of the realm. There's the first, the second, and the third. What you are supposed to do is to analyze what they do, and then if you want to see, you can see what the third, or you can, in the public interest, present what they do with such intellectual capital that it leaves no questions. You should go and answer for society. Haven't you heard that the opener has been challenged, that, he ha that the man doesn't owe 140 million? Up till now, he has not been able to produce a single document. Is that how to do intellectual analysis? You take a report that you didn't author. The report didn't draw such a conclusion. And then you draw such a conclusion and propagate it to create hatred. And the man has come to your studio and challenged you. Nobody is asking you that question. Where is the evidence that the man owes 140 million? Where is the evidence? You have not been able to produce it. Civil society, you are not asking him that one. 
Nobody is asking him that one, and he continues. That's not the kind of journalism that we are used to. Please, that's not the kind of journalism we are used to. The investigative journalism we are used to is high quality. Let me show you this. And you can say anything about this guy. Yes, he trained on me, whatever, whatever. This is quality intellectual journalism. Have a look. Good afternoon. My name is Bernard Avle. I work at CTFM. Mr. Mr. President, I remember during the campaign, yourself and the Vice President expressed worry about the level of debt that Ghana was incurring. And among other things, you said that because of the mismanagement, we were having to borrow and then we had enough internal resources and therefore we should block the loopholes. Permit me to give you some figures. In March this year, we went for a 1 billion Ghana CD three-year bond. In April, a 2.25 billion dollar bond, which translates to 10.25 billion CDs, was announced. In the same month, we announced a 2.4 billion dollar bond to clear legacy debts in the energy sector, translates that to 12 billion CDs. Last week, we were told there's a 17.4 billion CD bond being sought for Q3. Putting all the figures together in Ghana CDs, that's about 40 billion CDs. If all these bonds go through by Q3, the last time I checked, our GDP was about 80 billion CDs. If within the first three, first quarter, I mean first year, we're already borrowing up to half of our GDP, where are the internal resources? How many, res how much resources have you generated internally? Why are we still borrowing this much? Thank you. Have you seen it? Open. Are you watching? Have you seen it? That is journalism that when he puts on the table, everybody is aware that this is fact-finding. This is intellectual. Not the one that you come and make a conclusion that somebody owes money. The person challenges you that he doesn't owe money. You're not able to produce it. You're not able to produce it. And then you go and write people's names that they are saying DJ press statements and set them up for insults. That, is, he, that you don't know his closeness with a with a GJ. When the person is a member of the GJ, you, you, I, I don't understand that opener. You see these things. I don't want to talk yet. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that because you have a, a talent. G, me and GJ, you know how far we go. Please, GJ gave me an award 16 years ago. Have a look at it. Have a, have a look at it. Have a look at it. You see that I'm a member of the GJ. Ghana Journalist Association, GJ, News Reporting Radio, award for... See it again, 2001-2002. Who? Paul Adumochi, Joe FM. And you are asking that, what is my closeness with the GJ? Are you all right? This is 2001-2002. Ghana Journalist Association, news reporting. So I became the news reporter of the year, thank God. Who is that? The same name that you wrote and said that you don't know his closeness with the GJ is the same name that was receiving an award 16 years ago from the GJ. Are you okay? You see how... Anger and things can do. When you are directing Miss Energy, you see what it can do to you. You expose your cerebral weaknesses and limitations. That's what you do. You put up a statement that is laughable. That's what you do, my friend. That's what you do, Opana. And Mr. Man, that's what you do. Now, let's go to the first part of the statement. Let's go to the statement again. That's the first part. He said he knows his closeness to just spawn something. Let's have a look at that. Please, screenshot. Let's put it on again. Aha, uh -huh. it is here again. Why? This is Saturday afternoon, though. I was sitting my somewhere worried about black stars. Then the people called me and the guy has put this thing. I, I don't want to use certain words, and I shouldn't. Frankly, could you? I've seen your call. I'll stop. Don't, don't worry. I'll stop. You, at some point, we'll stop. We'll stop very soon. Then we'll go to Zangalewa. Because Dr. Umana Tukuba is coming to teach us some better law. We'll stop. Why is Paul Adomotri sending the GJ press statement to media houses? I know his closeness with Joss Pond, but not the GJ. Okay, so... Why is my closeness to Just Pond? So in 2008, we were, I was part of the, I was working alongside the, um, the CAN 2008 organizing committee, you know? And I was quite worried at the opening game, the one that we won, about how we're going to clean that before the next day because I didn't want Ghana to be embarrassed. Because I didn't know, I, I'd never heard Zoom Lion before. Then the next day we came and the guys told us that Zoom Lion came to clean. I said, who is Zoom Lion? And they said, oh, you don't know Zoom Lion. They will come just now, have a look at them. So they came, and the way in which they cleaned, and I said, wow, where did they come from? They said, oh, there's some guy in Tema. That's what I was told. He's in Tema something. He brought Zoom Lion. So from that time, I started looking for this man because I wanted to associate with him. Because, you see, my small reading of development economics, it is not politicians who build a country. It is entrepreneurs who build a country. 
And when you have entrepreneurs, the politicians are supposed to support them. Tonight, we'll show you from the time of Rockefeller in the 19th century. The American establishment has supported Rockefeller as a businessman, as an entrepreneur. I'm not saying when they do, they do wrong, don't say it. You can say it. But the reason why I am close to him, and I, I, it took me about four years even to find him. Sometimes you call him, you pick it's still like that. It's six weeks, you won't find him. But when you find him, he's able to tell you so many things that shocks you, his ideas. And you'll see that this entrepreneurship is a gift. So as, as far as I am concerned, this man, Joseph Sian Ajapon, put his photograph there. Joseph Sian Ajapon, he is not a liability to Ghana. He is an asset. Joseph Sian Ajapon is not a liability. He is an asset. You may have his wrongs, but he's an asset to this country. And everyone will recognize that a man who can take your brand to Liberia. Look, this is a guy that the World Bank said that he had done something in Liberia and they had put him on suspension. He worked so hard with the World Bank that the World Bank came back and said that he is now the template for, for, for good corporate governance and award of contract. Such a person. Siam a Japan is an is a asset to this country. It's not a liability. He's not the only one. Show the rest. Let's tell them. That we are prepared to support local businesses. That's the only way our country has been built. This is Tobinko. Tobinko is an asset to this country. It's not a liability. He's an asset. He can never be a liability because he is an entrepreneur. He's created businesses. This is Ernesto Fori, my fellow that year. He's an asset to this country. He is not a liability. He's an asset. We have to understand that. This entrepreneur is an asset. Look at this man, Coco King. Shouldn't they be giving him the school feeding program? Shouldn't they? The government should go and support this gentleman. He has demonstrated that he understands how to feed people with little resources. Bring Coco King again. I'm not finished with him. He has demonstrated that and put his brand on. He has demonstrated that he's able to feed people. I'll come to a second despite. Coco King has demonstrated that he is able to feed people. To feed people. Why are we not giving him the school feeding program? And if they go and give the school feeding program, somebody says that the contract has been awarded to him. Why should it be awarded to him? Because he's an entrepreneur who has demonstrated that it's achievable. These are the people who build our nation. These are the people who create employment. These are the people who make possible one district, one factory. These are the people who make it possible. It's not the politicians in parliament. They are supposed to legislate. It's not as the media. Well, maybe we two are entrepreneurs, but well, that's Coco King. Coco King should be, should be awarded something by the government. The guy has worked so hard. Let's move on. It's 47 minutes past 9 o'clock. Let's move on very quickly. And then we have a Kwame despite, of course. You know that. This is an asset to this country. It's not a liability. It's not it's an asset to this country. It's not a liability. Osei Kwame despite. You know, let's move on. This is, now, this is my favorite. Roland Agambiri. I am telling you, viewers, that we are praying for Roland. Roland Agambiri will bounce back. He will bounce back and be able to achieve results. Of course, we know that the Jida thing affected him a little bit. But Roland Agambiri will bounce back. He will bounce back. Roland RLG, I am telling you that we are praying for you. As an entrepreneur of our land, you will bounce back. And you will do business. And you will employ people. And you will create wealth. Roland will do it. He will bounce back. He will bounce back. Moses Baden? You forgot Moses Baden? There's Moses Baden. He's also an entrepreneur. And these guys are going to are going to bounce back. Moses Baby will bounce back. So, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we put these things up is it's not it's so that we can understand that when people are practicing this kind of trial in the media, these days they go and they say the guy's a thief. We were taught that you should use words like alleged, it may be, it appears. What has happened to all that? What has happened to all those lessons we were doing? I am saying that what Opana does on radio, no professor of communication can vouch for that. I'm sorry, but that's the point. No professor of communication can vouch for that. And civil society say that the, the statement was castigating journalists and it was impeding the work of journalists. And it, within the context, a civil, I was disappointed. When the guy is running a risk and doing media trial, civil society, you like that, the guy has been put a question. You say that the guy owes you 140 million. He owes the state. The state hasn't said the guy owes him. You said it. I don't know whether you were the accountant or the JIDA committee. You can't show it in the JIDA report. The guy came to your studio. You couldn't show it. Nobody is asking him that question. Where is the evidence of what you have propagated consistently and missed insults that the guy owes the state 140 million? Where is it? You think it is pedestrian matter that we do? Please, you have talent. You have to, as, as I advise you, maybe you have to engage with Aristotle and Plato and read Homer's Iliad. It will help you. 
so that when you are writing, you will write things that don't expose your cerebral weaknesses. And then you go and write people's names on a Saturday so that people will insult them. That I'm distributing DJ. I'm not distributing. I am canvassing for it. People don't like Afro money for something that happened last year. Over, I don't want to remind families of things that have happened that are not good. You know, we don't want to do that. But something happened with the uh, Flagstaff House, Stanley, Stanislav Dugbe and all that. And somehow people will hold something against Afro money. It's okay. I don't mind. All I'm saying is that the statement that Afro money issued, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. If you do a content analysis, and the statement that the, 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 the uh, civil society issued is fundamentally flawed. It is unrepresentative of what Afelmoni wrote because he didn't castigate and he didn't impede. And I'm surprised. We sat here and Eddie Annan went and sued and won the case. Everybody pretends they've forgotten. These guys go on radio and they call a businessman a thief. You are the fourth estate of the realm. You're not the first. You're not the second. You're not the third. So as we were trained, learn to use words like alleged. It appears. We don't know. But it looks like. Do that. Don't go on a tangent and write on Facebook. Now you're writing on Facebook. Go and look at the case of um, the British case. Please put that case on. Let's, let's show them what happened. There's a case in England in a British court recently. It's not too long ago. Yes. McAlpine versus Beko. Do you go and look for this case. Do you know what happened? The BBC was fined. And they paid. ITV was fined. They lost the libel case. Now, this is BBC. I'm not talking about... Uh, this is BBC. They, they, they lost the case. And they were fined. Put on also, as we conclude, the Indian matter. Let me just read uh, from Professor Chaudhry. Professor Chaudhary. He is uh, from a university in India. Uh, look at the first part. It says, the last of the tenth points. That clearly implicates that it is not ethical. It is not ethical to prejudge the guilt or innocence of a victim or alleged criminal before the court of law announces the verdict. This connotes that the concept of media trial is unethical practice. Have you heard it? This is from India. That professor is a solid professor from the Indian School of Communication. That's why I'm saying to you that no professor of communication will see what happens on radio when they are calling people thieves without a court trial. And the other has demonstrated that when you do that, he will find he will go to court and he will win. So little one against the, 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 the electronic media group. Good evening, Egbert Fabel. You know why I'm greeting you, sir. Congratulations on your new appointment. Eddie Annan went in and won the case. He says, this connotes that the concept of media trial is an unethical practice. Haven't you heard it? And then you, a, a civil society, you don't know this. You haven't seen this. And you say statement is castigating. And then because they are chasing corruption. Who pronounces corruption? It's the court. Now, I'm passionate about this because I was on that Eddie Annan bandwagon. I was on it. And we we're all shouting, hey, he has taken contract from Slate. Contract is inflated. The contract was done in Chasasari's house near the swimming pool. Professor Mills was there. We were saying all these things. The man had patience for us. He went to court and he won flat. Have we forgotten Black Rasta? Or have we forgotten? So when a GJ publishes a statement like this and everybody is jumping on the bandwagon, and I'm disappointed about civil society, the guy in question, he has been challenged. He hasn't responded. The guy has talent. Oh, but now you have talent. There's no doubt about it. Now, let me end about um, entrepreneurs. How do we identify entrepreneurs? Have a look at this book. I picked it and I look at it. And it's Rocky Feller. It's something about Rocky Feller. One minute, we'll finish. We'll just finish just now. One minute. Let's have, let's have a look at the book, uh, the Rocky Feller book, and then uh, the statement. So this book, you should get it. It's called The Prize. It's entitled The Epic Quest for Oil money and power is a winner of the Pulitzer Award. Now, this is what it says. This is the definition of an entrepreneur. The book is written by Daniel Yegin. This is a definition of an entrepreneur. He's describing Rockefeller. And this, you will find that entrepreneurs are not produced every day, but they build nations. Rockefeller built his fortune by taking on a youthful, wild, unpredictable, and unreliable industry and relentlessly transforming it according to his own logic into a highly organized, far-flung business that satisfied the basic hunger for light around the world. That's the definition of an entrepreneur. When you see Coco King, that is him. When you see Moses Bedin, that is this. When you see Joseph Sian of Japan, this is it. And this is what we have to protect. I'm not saying when they do wrong, don't say it. 
but don't say it in a way that depicts that you have either a personal issue with them in a way that depicts that every morning you are coming on them for four months in the same company last year almost all the banks collapsed in ghana because of a certain company nobody talked about it mr man did you hear open you didn't hear that last year in ghana here because of the of a company banks were collapsing you didn't hear you that's why you don't know about it do you know how much money was involved in that and this company is owned by foreigners you don't know that one but when it's a local person you're after him so that you will collapse our economy some of us will not allow you to do that and i dare you the court will not allow you to do that you will hear what the court will tell you when you you are told that you can't go on radio and say somebody's a thief who has reputation this is the definition of of the thing rocky fella that's the definition i have to end here because Roman Atukba has come to teach us some very solid law you know so i don't want to go on but please next time don't be putting people's names and and writes things that uh, you know it, it, it exposes you a person is a member of a group you say you don't know his closeness to them what what, what kind of you do you read through the thing before you publish it you do read it when you type it did you read it again or in your anger you hurriedly put it on please 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 let's have some quality from you because as i keep saying you have talent i have to end here because there's a scripture that is ringing in my mind and telling me stop 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 let me show you the scripture uh, i hope you guys have the scripture please put the scripture there it's in Proverbs 18, 22. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So you see, when a young man finds a wife, God gives him favor. If God gives a man favor, men must also favor him. But this is a very difficult editorial for because I had to say it. Because Opana has found a wife, a beautiful one. And we also a lovely event. It's beautiful. So he's not the kind of person that at this stage of his career, we should be talking about him in this regard. But you see, sometimes you can't help it. It's very painful, but you have to do it. Proverbs 18, 22. He who finds a wife has found a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Opana, Mr. Man, he's found a wife. And we are glad about it. It's beautiful. But so this is all very complicated and difficult for us to put across. But hey, we have to do it. So, you know, we have to end at this stage. And I think that the point has been well made. Uh, nonetheless, we will lay him. And when we say we lay you on Good Evening Ghana, it's not human rights abuse. We lay you with our favorite song. Open, have a good evening. I think that our point is well made. If you want us to continue the conversation, we can continue. No insults. But also, when you write a thing, you read through, make sure that it doesn't have contradictions. You put it out. Sometimes we respond. Sometimes we won't respond. But we are all brothers. We are all small, small boys. We are all learning. We all get there. But let's protect our country. Let's not have hatred. Let's protect our people. And let's pray for William Agambiri. Give him one Zangalewa. Let's go.